Remove the two Phillips screws from the top of the plastic cover and then remove the cover. Remove the three bolts from the fuel tank assembly. Remove the bolt on the side of the fuel tank. Remove the fuel tank assembly from the engine and set it off to the side without disconnecting the fuel line. The ignition system can be serviced without removing the fuel line from the tank. Remove the two bolts from the back of the starter shroud. Remove the bolt that holds down the oil filler tube and remove the oil filler. Remove the two bolts from the front of the starter shroud. Remove the starter shroud. Remove the two screws that hold down the ignition armature. Turn the armature over and remove the stop switch wire. Remove the armature. Remove the flywheel nut using an air impact and remove the nut and starter cup. Thread on the correct knocker on the crankshaft leaving a small gap at the bottom. Do not let the knocker touch the flywheel. Place the screwdriver under the flywheel at the shown location and pull up on the screwdriver. Strike the knocker with a hammer and the flywheel will loosen. Remove the knocker from the crankshaft. When removing the flywheel, make sure the flywheel key is not lost. Slowly lift up the flywheel and remove the flywheel key. The armature must be tested between the primary lead and ground, then between the secondary winding lead and ground. To test the armature primary windings, place the multimeter on the 200 ohm setting. Place one probe on the primary winding lead and the other on the metal laminations ground. A reading of around 0.7 ohms to 1 ohm is normal. To test the armature secondary windings, place the multimeter on the 20K ohm setting. Place one probe in the spark plug lead and the other on the metal laminations or ground. A reading of around 4K ohms to 7K ohms is normal. If the meter reads 1, it means there is an open circuit in the winding and the armature must be replaced. Some engines have one stop switch while others have two. The flywheel brake stop switch is located next to the flywheel and as the handle is pressed, a lever moves away from the switch and opens the circuit. As the handle is let go, the lever moves against the switch and closes the circuit and the engine stops. Some engines may also have a throttle stop switch located above the carburetor and it works the same way as a flywheel brake switch does. To test the flywheel brake switch, place the multimeter on the diode or 200 ohm setting. Ground one end of the probe to the engine block and place the other probe into the wire that connects to the primary side of the armature. Move the lever so the rubber pad touches the flywheel and the meter should show zero ohms. Close circuit and the engine will stop. 
Move the lever so the rubber pad is away from the flywheel and the meter should read 1, indicating an open circuit and the engine will run. If the engine has a throttle stop switch, test it the same way as the flywheel brake switch was tested. There should be 0 ohms in the stop position and have an open circuit in the run position. To test the strength of the flywheel magnet, place a large flat tip screwdriver three quarters of an inch away from the magnet. The screwdriver should pull to the magnet. Before installing the flywheel, make sure the flywheel brake is not under the flywheel. Place the flywheel on the crankshaft, rotate it to align the keyways, and install the flywheel key. Install the starter cup and flywheel nut. Slide the flywheel holding tool over the fins of the flywheel and torque the flywheel nut to the correct torque. Install the stop switch wire on the primary side of the armature and install the armature. Before tightening the armature screws, pull the armature away from the flywheel, then tighten the screws. Rotate the flywheel so the magnet aligns under the two legs of the armature, then place the correct thickness feeler gauge between the armature and the flywheel magnet. Loosen the screws and the armature will slide against the magnet and the feeler gauge. Tighten the screws and rotate the flywheel to remove the feeler gauge. Place the spark plug wire in the location as shown. Install the starter shroud and place the two short bolts in the front of the starter shroud. Install the two long bolts in the back of the starter shroud. Torque all four bolts to 84 inch-pounds. Install the oil filler tube and bolt. Install the spacer in the back of the fuel tank assembly and install the tank. Make sure there is a plastic spacer on the end of the bolt and install the bolt through the fuel tank. Install the three bolts in the top of the fuel tank. Install the plastic cover and the two screws that hold it down. <laughs> 